you ever traveled across the world before? I have, and I'll tell you, it's not that quite easier than you think. In Japan, I don't think you get they, you, they accept American bills, but I'm pretty sure most of the world does this kind of stuff. But I don't, don't want to offend the world or anything, because I wouldn't want to trigger a world war or something else enough, enough that the chit-chat. I have something to tell you. There is this funny episode of Charlie and Lola that I have to tell you it was weird. Let me discuss it. Hello there. My name is Wildstyle. Call me Lucy if you want to. I live in a weird city where it's an entitled of Cyclone Star, or Solar System Apocalypse. It's basically Bricksburg, but it's all themed into space, rainbows, and more. One day I thought that I would go up to a new video store that just opened across the street that is not too far away as I thought. So I made my way there, and as I walked, I came across a good friend of mine. Her name is Vanessa Dauphin Smertz, and she was the daughter of Dr. Doofsim Smertz, and she's also good friends with Cadence. I would like to, to not like to tell you any more details of Cadence because I wouldn't want Vanessa to tell her that she, there is a Lego figure in town. When I met another friend, his name is Asaya Vargas, he hated dead memes for some odd reason. I never know why, but he wanted to keep it that way. I, for real time, wanted to go to the video store. I made my way to the kids section and found videotapes of Barney and Friends, Thomas and the Tank Engine, Postman Pat, Bear in the Big Blue House, and Sesame Street, and the other ones. I was looking through the cases until I heard a voice said, Give me ten these. I screamed as loud as I heard it because it was in my ear. I turned around to see what looked like a man who his name is Mr. Charles and he was offering me a DVD. The DVD showed Lola from Charlie and Lola looking down at her feet. You could see that there's a space needle above the Seattle falling from the ground as Charlie was doing a floss and Mary redoing a tea post. I was found to be awfully strange, but I brought it, al bought it along anyway with some other stuff. The store clerk was named Arfeso Roberto, and he invited me to live in the city of Bel Air with his son, Will Smith. 30 minutes later, I came home and checked in the mail, and I looked to find out that there, that I had to pay a water bill and utility bill. While scrolling through my mail, I heard a voice say, Hello there, can you spare some change, please? I looked behind to see a yellow girl in, rain, in a raincoat looking very homeless. I spared over $100 in her hat and just went into the house. I answered the DVD, and while I got some milk, chocolate milk out of the fridge, I forgot that my cat Thomas O'Malley who didn't know I was home, assumed that he was sleeping, sat down and was ready to watch this strange DVD. It started off with the normal Charlie and Lola intro. The title of the episode was called The City of New York vs. Lola. The episode started off with Lola making a tower of blocks, and Charlie was reading a book of about the wonders of China. Charlie looked at the camera and said in his usual quote, I have this little sister Lola. She is small and very funny. It wasn't until the mailman arrived and told Charlie that there was mail for Lola. Lola was given the piece of mail that detailed every bit of her family that were invited to visit the new Krispy Kreme Donuts in the Times Square. Lola went upstairs to tell her parents that she won a trip to New York. When I looked at Charlie and Lola's parents, they didn't look like humans. They looked like a gay elf couple. And the family packed their fangs and got into the car. When they got on the plane, Lola started acting very crazy as the plane took off. She slipped all the way down to the flight deck and triggered a pilot flying the plane, telling her to get the hell out of the, out of the cockpit. Charlie and his parents were disappointed by Lola's behavior. They arrived at New York and visited some cool places like Times Square itself. Charlie visited the Toys R Us store with Lola and the rest of the family. They went to the Krispy Crime Donuts where Charlie checked out the toy that he got, and he was met by a familiar person by the name of Solozos. He claimed that he was going to sell some toys to give to the children's hospital. Meanwhile, Lola saw the doll the donuts that they made at Krispy Kreme, and she wanted to get the candy apple donut. So Lola ordered about 20 of them because the elf couple didn't give a crap. Then Charlie reunited with his family, and they all went to a play, but to see a play about Mamma Mia. However, the cast and crew sang a really weird parody of Rock Me by Endemis. This episode was just having some similarities to The Simpsons, I'll tell you. 
As the cast kept on singing, more people showed up such as the great bootleg, Michael Rosen, Mr. Conductor, Freddy Krueger, Carson McClay, Rafiki, Lana, Lori Loud, Mr. and Mr. Fox, Lionel Richie, Pingu's family with Robbie the Seal, Jack Jackbox, and Danny DeMito. It was at nighttime and Charlie was watching some Char Thomas and Friends on television until he got bored. Meanwhile, when morning approached, Lola woke up to hear some humming noises coming from the restroom. She then walked in and noticed Luna from, from the place singing while humming. While watching Lo Luna having her morning scrub, Charlie could be hear screaming. It was confirmed that Charlie was being kidnapped. Then Lola went outside and saw a person named John F. Kennedy was talking to Charlie, was taking Charlie away. She dialed up and got a few people, such as Beavis and Butthead, and got into their motorcycles and went in to chase the kidnapper. When they got a hold of him, Beavis held up a picture of his clothes with a woman when, from The Shining. The episode then abruptly ended with the credits. To be honest, it was the weirdest crossover I've ever watched. After that, I got a knock on the door and I opened up to see Bassar Rebels wondering if John F. Kennedy lives there and I told him that he's in New York. Meanwhile, I decided to go out of my sports car and grab myself a beer. As I visited the sports car, I met up with Richard Baggs and we talked about the kids show that we a bit and then headed out. I have no idea if John F. Kennedy and his play, place of race car was a thing. If this was a news report being put onto DVD, if I were to come across another lost episode of Charlie and Lola like that again, I would have to blame my neighbor's children. And if you're wondering who my neighbor is, he is a house. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to go find John F. Kennedy for all the crap he put Charlie through. And that, my little pretties, was The City of New York vs. Lola. A Charlie and Lola Lost episode creep pasta written by, well, I know who it is, which is Ashley Armbruster. I know he did change the name of it, but since the name's going to be really long, I'm just going to leave the title as Ashley Armbruster just because I want to make sure it's short, not very, you know, incredibly long name because, you know, the title will only allow you, you know, 100 um, characters. But anyways, Ashley Armbruster... I want to thank you so much for this story. I really do appreciate the fact that you wrote this for me. A Charlie and Lola story. Thank you so much. Now, anyways, with that being said, what did I think of this story? Well, I actually found this to be rather funny, to be completely honest. Now, surprisingly, there's not really much I can definitely say. But I definitely have to say, this is actually be one of the most interesting stories I've ever seen. Funny ones at that. Now, I did remember reading Charlie and Lola at one point, but I can't remember when it was. But I do know that it was a really interesting concept, to say the least. <laughs> I definitely have to say, there was definitely a lot of great, um, well, time in this story. So, I definitely have to say, the uh, grammar was actually pretty good. The sentence instruction was actually really amazing. The storyline was awesome, and everything about it was just... Flat out good. Like, <laughs> I know it's a funny pasta, and funny pastas really are not meant to be taken seriously, nor that they, you know, are supposed to whole lot make a whole lot of sense. But, you know, I get it. Some funny pastas don't really do tend to make a whole lot of sense. But the story itself is just absolutely plays out well. Like, I could actually see this being a Charlie and Lola episode. Now, however, I could definitely say right now <laughs> about, you know, the fact that, you know, Charlie and Lola are British. I remember watching this show when I was younger. And, you know, I really do wish that they continue making more seasons of this show. I really do. So, but with that being said, I honestly found this story to be rather good. Like, the grammar was good. The sentence structure worked out well. The storyline was excellent. And you're really improving there, Ashley Armbruster. With the grammar in that, you're really improving pretty well. Now... With that being said, the sentence instruction was good, and same with the paragraph structuring. I could definitely say that it was funny, and it was actually played out well. Like, the flow of it is what I really was liking. I liked how the flow kept going on. At least the story didn't go all over the place. The story, you know, stayed right top-notch beautiful when it came to, you know, the grammar and the sentence structuring. Even the storyline, too. 
I definitely have to say, Ash Armbruster, this story was actually really good. Even though I haven't seen Charlie and Lola in a while, I might consider maybe watching an episode or two of this, well, for the first time in a long time, so. Well, this story, what I could definitely say, there's definitely a lot of time and effort into the story. And this is a very good positive when it comes to that. Because nowadays, Cree pastas nowadays, just don't really put a whole lot of effort. I know I've said this in a bunch of my other videos, but I don't seem to get why that's the case with certain people. Why is it that nobody puts F time and effort in their stories? I'm not saying any of you guys don't. I'm saying that, you know, other Cree pastas like, well, Dipper goes to Taco Bell for exact example and some other stuff like that i don't understand why people you know sit there and don't bother to put any time and effort in the stories but in this matter though even though there might have been a few there's a few cliches in the story but i know it's meant to be a funny pasta so i'm willing to excuse that especially with the fact that this story actually flowed out well it actually helped kept the story you know from going all over the place not like you know other pastas, but other than that, the story was absolutely really good. And I have to say, Ash Iron Bruster, <laughs> you did a really good job with the story, and I really hope you make more of these, because these ones are awesome. And if you do have other stories that I've read, read, you know, last year that I have deleted them, if you want to send me those stories, feel free to, because I am trying to find, you know, other ones that you've written, but I can't seem to find them, even though I looked them up. But if you guys, but if you seem to have found uh, one of them that I, read, that I narrated back on, well, back on this channel back in 27, 2019, and if you would like me to narrate it, re-narrate it, just let me know. Don't forget to link me the story, so then that way I'll have a chance to look at it. Okay. I think I kind of, you know, explained long enough about what I like it. Now, if I have to say one thing negative would have to be about it, would have to be, what was it? It would have to be the fact that, you know, everything kept happening right then and there. You know, I know there was, I know it's a funny pasta, but I think there were maybe one or two things wrong with it, but I can't exactly point out. I just can't point it out. I don't know what it is, but I can't seem to find it. But other than that, the story was actually really good. A lot of time and effort, I can definitely say that. There's definitely a lot of time and effort into the story. So anyways... Uh, I'm gonna say this right wrapped up this review because there's not really a whole lot for me to you know explain I kind of explained you know what I liked about this story Oh, yeah, if I had to say one thing that I didn't really care for was the fact that Let me see the fact that you know this guy, you know would you know I guess you could say there was like a homeless girl, you know, I understand it was kind of like a funny pasta, but I, there was where did she go was just my question there's like no explanation on where this homeless girl went unless there's a big explanation on why where she is or something then that way it'd be more understandable because in this matter i don't know where she went it doesn't really explain where she went did she go you know out back on the streets did she go to someone's house i know she was at this protagonist's house in the first place but still that's just something. Now, about the homeless girl needed to be maybe just kind of properly explained of where what happened to her. That way it'd be more understanding because, you know, I don't know what it is, but, you know, she was all of a sudden there and then boom, she was gone. But anyways, I guess I'm kind of done explaining, you know, what I liked about this story. But if you guys like this story, give it a like, hit the subscribe button down below. And oh, by the way, I'm going to say this right now before I forget. I'm going to say this right now, and like I always continue to say, this is simply my own personal opinion, and if you disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these uh, Cree pastas, or funny pastas. If you guys prefer to call this a funny pasta, that's totally fine with me, because I am okay with it. And that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these uh, Cree pastas. This is simply my own personal thoughts. Uh, my final rating of the story... I'm going to give this one a, um, I guess you could just say 10 out of 10. No, wait, scratch that. Uh, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. I'm giving it a 9 because it was pretty good for the most part. It was really enjoyable. It was funny. But the there was only one thing that I did mention was about the homeless girl. There was not really much about her, you know, what happened to her and that. So if there was, you know, a little bit of an explanation of what happened to her or something... You know, if she went somewhere or something like that, 
it be more properly explained and that would be, you know, a little bit more helpful in that situation. But other than that, this story was actually pretty good. But other than that, you know, the grammar was good. I can definitely say that. The sentence structure worked out well. The, the pun punctuation was good. Everything about it was good. But, you know, if you guys like this story, let me know in the comments. And what did you guys think about this story? Did you all like it? Did you all not? Also, what we have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Leave me now your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you are brand new here to this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Uh, don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so that that way you guys don't miss an upload. And as always, roll the outro because I'm out of here and I'll be catching you all in the next video. So peace out everyone and I'll see you all in the next video.